Hello and welcome to the Streamcast. My name is Isaac and today we will be talking about the Norse god Tyr. There are two characters you don't see throughout the game, but their influence can be felt permeating through the world, the first being Odin and the second being Tyr. With Odin, you see his ravens watching you. You hear of the terrible deeds he's done to Mimir, Freya, the Valkyries and probably a lot more people. I honestly don't believe anyone has a nice thing to say about the man. On the other hand, we have Tyr who, unlike the other gods, was beloved by all, including the giants who hated the gods due to the deeds of the gods' mightiest warrior, Thor, otherwise known as the Fat Dobber by Mimir. The Fat Dobber. And even though Tyr does not make an appearance in the game, he leads the way forward for Kratos and Atreus. He provides them the key to get to Jotunheim, which is hidden by a very elaborate set of puzzles, which include hiding the gate to Jotunheim in the space between realms. Helpful gods in the God of War series are few and far between and are usually some of the most interesting characters in the series. Pre-God of War 1, you had Ares who bestowed you with your blades of chaos, but pointed your rage and fury in the direction of your family, causing Kratos to kill his wife and daughter and setting you on your path to vengeance. Wow. God of War 1, 2 and 3, we had Athena guiding us, but ultimately for her own selfish reasons. And in God of War Ascension, we had Orcos, who is probably the only friend we see Kratos make. And spoiler alert, Kratos has to kill him. Actually, to be fair, Kratos seems quite fond of the last Spartan in God of War 2. Whatever happened to that guy? Believe it or not, Tyr is also the god of war. He's the Norse god of war. One of his notable tales includes the child of Loki, Fenrir. Fenrir was a wolf that the gods feared, and while they sent away Loki's other two children, Hel was sent to Hel to become its ruler, and Jormungandr was tossed into the sea where he grew so large he encircled all of Midgard, Fenrir was locked in a stronghold on Asgard so the gods could keep watch of him. Only one god dared to approach the wolf to feed him. Tyr. Hold on. So the gods were scared of this wolf that was growing in strength. Maybe stop feeding it or just kill it. The gods were okay with Thor's genocide of the giants. What's one wolf? The gods wanted to chain up Fenrir, but Fenrir wasn't stupid. So they disguised their scheme as a test of strength. In doing so, Fenrir allowed the gods to chain him up so he could break out and prove how strong he was. Fenrir broke every chain, so the gods decided to enlist the help of the dwarves who were master craftspeople. The dwarves created a ribbon made from the sound of a cat's footsteps, the beard of a woman, the roots of a mountain, the breath of a fish, and the spittle of a bird. They named the ribbon Gleipnir. Odin brought Gleipnir to Fenrir, however Fenrir was no fool and saw through Odin's deception. He would agree to the challenge if one of the gods placed their hand in his mouth. A reluctant Tyr agreed to do so and after they bound Fenrir, it was clear that Fenrir could not escape. The gods roared with laughter and Fenrir looked to Tyr who whispered, do it. Fenrir bit off Tyr's hand and the gods left Fenrir tied up, but Fenrir vowed to eat the sun, the moon and kill Odin. I'm glad Tyr didn't die, but Fenrir really should have asked for a god's head in his jaws as insurance instead of just an arm. Better yet, Odin's head. Odin would take advantage of Tyr once again. And to help me tell this story, I've enlisted my good friend, Mimir. There was an incident shortly after the forging of Mjolnir, when Tyr arranged a diplomatic meeting between Odin and the giant kings. Well, this was when the Long War was young, when victory was still a thing dreamed of and the Jotnar might have tipped the balance between Aesir and Vanir. Odin had persuaded Tyr that the hammer was merely a deterrent, a means to broker peace from a position of strength. Tyr was hopeful to convince all parties they would prosper best through peace. He knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, a super weapon in hands they did not trust. But they trusted Tyr. 
Tyr always believed the best in people, and taking Odin at his word in his desire for peace, he brought the Raven King to Jotunheim. Uh, from there, things unraveled quickly. The giants anticipated Odin's trickery and exposed his true agenda to spy and steal their secret wisdom. With magics, they expelled Odin from their realm and cursed him never to return. Frustrated, Odin visited his fury upon the giants of Midgard. Thor unleashed Mjolnir's might upon any giant he could find. None could stand against the tide of slaughter that followed. And at last, it seems, with Tyr's aid, they retreated. The tower disappeared, no giants could be found in Midgard, and no man nor god has set foot in Jotunheim since. The events that transpired would probably lead to the imprisonment of Tyr, as Tyr helped the remaining giants escape. You see, Tyr was a man who wanted peace. He would travel and speak with other cultures. He used his powers with wisdom and for good, according to Mimir. This can be seen in his vault, as we see the Eye of Horus symbol from Egypt, the Omega from Greece, the Celtic symbol, and the Japanese symbol. Mimir held Tyr in high regard, believing him to be a great leader who did not want power and control like Odin did, but knowledge and understanding. And every time we hear of Tyr, he is spoken of fondly or has devised a clever trick to keep the giants safe. In essence, he's quite the opposite of Odin, so much so that Odin had him locked up and told the world he died. While Odin wants to hoard knowledge and power, Tyr freely shares it. Mimir has said that Tyr tries to see the best in people, and this can clearly be seen in his interaction with the Fenrir as wolf. Honestly, Fenrir should have asked for Odin's head between his jaws instead of an open invitation from one of the gods to put their hand in the wolf's mouth. Tyr paid with his arm, an arm we see in the trailer. This means Odin hasn't gone to the dwarves yet to tie up the wolf. Maybe the wolf doesn't exist yet. The wolf is Loki's child after all, and in the words of Kratos, Atreus is not ready, if you know what I mean. Really looking forward to seeing Tyr's role in the game. Will there be a time skip so he can interact with Loki's children? Will Kratos and Tyr fight? Honestly, I think Tyr being portrayed as a good god, but more importantly, a god shunned by Odin, will make him a powerful ally. In God of War, there's an exchange with Helios, and Helios says, that freak has fallen from the graces of Olympus. Um, the freak he's talking about is Hephaestus, and Kratos shoots back, that's exactly why I believe him. You lie, Helios! Hephaestus told me the flame kills all who touch it. And you believe him? That freak has fallen from the graces of Olympus! That is exactly why I believe. I believe Tyr will have Kratos' trust, which is a rare thing for Kratos to give out. Although I still want a boss fight with Tyr that Atreus will obviously come in and break up. I'd like to see how strong the Norse God of War is firsthand. What do you think Tyr will be like? Let us know in the comments.